Good evening, everyone. Would you stand up and we'll do the pledge, please? Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Reverend Wilkie? Father, we come humbly before you this evening and we ask a blessing on this meeting tonight. We pray for the trustees, for Mayor Snow, for all the other employees of the Village of Walton. We pray for their health, their welfare, and their safety. We ask a special blessing on this meeting as they do the affairs of the village. We ask for Father that there be unity and together in a sense of purpose for the betterment of all the people in the village. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Our Savior. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. I guess the thing we'll get started with we have a public hearing regarding 20 Griswold Street conditional use. I will need a motion to open it up to the public. Move to open up. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. At this time, I'll give everybody a chance that would wish to say something. Would you please, when you stand up, just give your name and address, and, and I'd appreciate it. So is there anyone that would like to speak up on this issue? I'm Frank Myers. I live next door to the Bacchuses at 22 Griswold Street okay. uh, in, uh, I guess it was Dick Thompson's house, the greenhouse. Yes. And I'm here to strongly oppose allowing this boat rental operation to continue in a single family residential zone. My wife and I were very involved in community and master planning in our rural community in Orange County. We understand how to read a code and the responsibilities of the code enforcement officer and the respective boards. I want to speak to you about a pattern of behaviors that have brought us to this point on the part of the petitioner and the village and go through the specific items in your code which will compel you to deny this request and demand an immediate cease and desist order on issued on 607 kayaks. I have told this mayor and the last mayor that we have a very long history in Delaware County and that we made a conscious decision to retire to Walton. We chose one of the nicest houses on one of the nicest streets in the village with a clear understanding of the village code. We bought our home in January of 2020 and had no idea that there was an outdoor and sporting goods company next door. We all live in close quarters in the village. It's a choice we make. We moved from a 20-acre farm with a 90-foot barn to a small lot with a great house and a two-car garage. Compromises have to be made and a good deal of tolerance is necessary when you live in the village. I gave up mowing hay and fixing fence for sidewalks, village water, sewer, and natural gas heat. No more well and septic, but I gave up my vegetable garden. There's no farm to table in a village except for consumers. When we bought our house, I could see some issues over the privacy fence that our predecessor had installed. Crows picking at bags of garbage that had been allowed to accumulate, piles of old tires, an accumulation of junk lawnmowers and snowblowers, piles of rotting wood fence and pallets, unregistered vehicles, cars, trailers parked on the front lawn. I'm gonna have to stop you. Yes. We're here for a public hearing to discuss mixed use for a property that is adjacent to yours. Yes. What you're speaking about has nothing to do with that issue. Well, actually it does, because if you're in violation of the code, you can't present yourself before the board. Check your rules. I'll continue. I called Mr. Dutcher, and his response was, I'm more concerned with people being killed in a building collapse than I am with your problems. When the weather began to warm up in the spring of 2020, we heard the pitiful cries from out back and found a big flock of chickens living in wet mud and squalid conditions. So I called there Mr. Are Dutcher. There are chickens, so we can skip that part. Called Mr. Dutcher again, and I must say that he had the unpermitted chickens removed. I called Mr. Dutcher on several other occasions. Can I just ask you a question? Is this going to be 
a long recitation of like another six or seven pages of everything. A couple more pages. Stephen happens to be correct. This is about the kayaks. This is not about chickens or dogs or pigs or anything else that may be going on. This is regarding having kayaks. Okay. This is not, and the but other yeah. issues that you may have, what you're talking about, yeah. which I'm aware of, yes. will be addressed by the code enforcement. And I spoke to the code enforcement officer, and those issues have been cleared up. And he, Excuse me? You heard what I said. I said, he said the issues of the codes have been cleared up. The junk hasn't changed at all since the day we got there. But we're not talking about junk. What point okay. did you miss? We're I said to you that we're having a public Don't hearing. Don't be insulting. Excuse me. I'm speaking. Okay. Put your hand down and you watch your tone. Okay? You're addressing a board and I'm speaking to you. And if I have to raise my voice to get my point across because you're rude, I will do so. Now, why don't you please have a seat unless you're going to discuss kayaks. Okay. Let's talk about kayaks. All right. Let's look at Griswold Street. The reason we moved to Griswold Street is because it's an ideal street in an upstate town. We all know what it looks like. Okay. Let's look at Griswold Street from the other direction. Now, I didn't pose that picture. Okay. That's from their Facebook page. Okay, got that. You recognize that that green house is my house and that the kayaks, as colorful as they are, are backed right up to my property line. Okay. This is the other part of the business from the street. That's what's real as opposed to what's ideal. Boat load, trailer loads of kayaks delivered across town in unregistered vehicles. Okay. I've talked to the police about it. They don't seem to think it's interesting or important. The Why would you discuss that with the police? Was there an emergency? Well, yeah, there was an emergency. What was it? Well, one of the emergencies was the school buses couldn't get up and down the street because of parking on both sides. Because they had their kayaks on their lawn? And I said, well, it's it's a code violation to have a boat trailer so on the So an, an instance of traffic is an emergency for the police in your eyes? I'm establishing the if, credibility if, here if that we're going, the direction we're going. vehicles are prohibited from moving up and down Was there the an emergency vehicle prohibited that you needed to call the police? I spoke you called the police because you just felt like complaining. Which one was it? I called the police because traffic is obstructed. I'm a former superintendent of schools, and when I see school buses blocked by somebody's selfish business and cars parked up on the curb that cause Mexican standoffs on a street... Don't you think that the phrase selfish business is an oxymoron for a school superintendent? Think, just think about that. That's a rhetorical question. What is your point about the emergency? That was my question. My concern is that if people are not allowed to pass up and down the street and emergency vehicles need to go up and down, then that's an issue. There's a no parking zone, there's no loading zone, there's nothing on the right hand side. <coughs> was that, this morning. Was that a 911 call? No, it was a call to the police. Okay. So you had Why would I call 911? Just this morning on Griswold Street, there was a car parked legally on the street. It happened to be my car because we're working on our kitchen. And I heard an enormous crash. And I looked out, and there was a car coming down Griswold that failed to yield, and a county tractor mower ran into a tree and sheared off a, about a five-inch limb on a tree in front of Clem's house. That's on a normal day when the streets are not blocked by the kayak business. <coughs> That's a problem. Okay, your so what's village it? crew, your village crews had to come and clean this limb up that the county sheared off. Okay. That's that happened when there weren't any vehicles parked up on the curb. Okay, so can for, we get to the next for a issue? Second, can I just uh, chime yeah. in for a second? Uh, there's been input from other neighbors that refute some of the issues that you bring up. Sure. So, you know, are they here? Pardon? Are they here? They submitted a letter to the to the board. Oh, but they're not here to present. Well, I. I'm sure we can give a copy of the letter. Well, no, they're not here. But they're not here. So go ahead, what's your next issue about them? The kayaks. 
I mean, Jody was there this morning when the tractor hit the tree because she I'm not I'm not disputing. I'm just saying, can you go on with the next issue that you want to talk about the kayaks? Sure. All right. Here are the issues relative to quality of life. <coughs> and this is an operation we saw it firsthand before COVID. Each morning, boats are dragged between the two foot space between the two houses. The reason there's a two foot space between the houses is there have been beehives that you're aware of and the previous- We're not getting into that. There is an illegal, unlicensed boat trailer parked there. So there's two feet of passageway between the houses. So each morning, the kayaks go bump, 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 bump down between the houses and each night they come back. Bump, 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 bump. There's no piece. They can't go down the main driveway on the other side of the back of this house because it's full of unregistered vehicles and junk. That's an issue. That's specific to the kayak business. The inventory is stored on racks in the backyard and protected by two floodlights that are turned on 24 hours a day, seven days a week on my property. One of the lights is directed directly into my kitchen. When the bulb burned out a few weeks ago, it was amazingly dark in my house. We could sleep. My wife saw Mr. Backus changing the bulb and a few days later and asked him if he would redirect the light away from our kitchen window. He ignored her. It's still at this moment is shining in my kitchen window. But that's not a, regarding the kayak. That's protecting the, that's it's protecting the light. The it's inventory. another issue that should be, be addressed. But this is not we're talking inventory. about the, the kayak. You can't have lights on chickens, but you evidently can have a Mr. Uh, Morgan is well aware of this. He said he would address it. The light is on okay. at this minute. There's no office for this outdoor and sporting goods company. The outdoor and sporting goods company does their business in the street. There are cars, three cars parked on the curb illegally. I've called the police, nothing's happened. Here's how business is transacted in the street. Now we're talking 20 kayaks going out and coming back every day. The business is conducted in the street. This is Mrs. Backus signing contract with Papa Boys in the street. You don't know that. I took the picture. I was fixing yeah, my porch. and you're teetering very closely to violating these people's civil rights. Do you realize that? By stating facts and providing when pictures? When did you arrive to America? Well, my we family no was here That's before 1650. Of images of people standing on a lawn. What are you talking about? I took the picture. What sense does this make? This is almost medical insanity. Can you, can you run a business outdoors, renting 20 kayaks a day? Show me in that picture the proof of running a business. Signing contracts. In the they don't go in the house to sign them. I beg and implore this board to stop this nonsense immediately. Well, I, I, you, are you almost done with what yep. you got to say? There's no off-street parking. <clears throat> so customers have to park up on the curb. Motors get frustrated. As I said, I've watched standoffs with school buses. What? Just fuck okay. the kayak. Let's go. You're getting a little bit carried away with this now. It's getting... Okay, let's go, let's go to your code. At the planning board, this has been to the ZBA, yes, which I know was canceled have. by the county, and went to the planning board. The planning board, it was not a public hearing, but there was an argument that this was a recreational facility. A recreational facility, according to the code, is a private or commercially operated, such as fishing boat, fishing and boating lakes, camping areas, picnic grounds, dude ranches, or similar, and their accessory facilities. I was responsible for thousands of students learning literacy. A recreational facility is a facility that provides recreation. This does not do that unless renting a boat is in itself. It's not a recreational facility, it's a private home. Thank you, okay. So let's go specific to the code. You wanna look at the code. This is the code that covers conditional uses. The purpose of a conditional well, use- I know, we read it. I know what it okay. is. The adventures of the, the playing board, we know what they said, we know what happened, and it was thrown back to the village boy. Okay. And that's what we're here for. You have to provide full protection to surrounding properties by rigid application of the regulations. You have to make sure the standards are met. Will not discourage the appropriate development and use of adjacent properties or substantially impair their value. It impairs the value of my property. How so? That's your, yeah. How so? How does it impair the value of your home? Because it's not in keeping with the residential zone. <coughs> Traffic generated by the proposed development can be adequately and safely 
served by the existing and proposed roads. Adequate off-street parking is required. The proposed development will not adversely affect the community appearance. It does. So you're saying that, that if somebody on your block has a party and all their guests can't park there because it's not adequate? They can't so park in no parking not zone. Every day. And they can't do it every day. Why can't they? You can't have a well, party why in have your a house. No parking you zone. can't have gatherings. Why have rules? All right, let's get to There's no rule that prevents people from parking on your street. Why don't you get it's that through no, your head? It's a no parking zone. Can you read? It's a no parking zone okay. on, on the right hand side, side of, of the, street. the street. Yeah. Okay, we're kind of getting nowhere fast. All right, let's. So. These cars are all parked up on the curb. Look, you've had 10 minutes to give you a talk. Okay, about I'm that. almost done. Proposed <laughs> development can be served by necessary community and not overtax facilities. Operation of any conditional use shall not be more objectionable or nearby to nearby property for reasons of noise, bump, 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 vibration, bump, 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 excessive lighting. No conditional use permit shall be issued for a property where there is a violation. Now, let me finish with one last quick thing. When this went before the ZBA in a meeting that was hastily canceled by the county, a very important thing was said. This would be a great business on Delaware Street. Now, why did they say that? They said that because parking on Delaware Street doesn't impede traffic or first responders trying to get to where they have to go. Foot and vehicle traffic might be able to draw incremental business to it. There would be indoor storage that might be secure instead of having everything in the backyard. Might be a showroom, an indoor office so the business okay, can conduct I, it I get the, the point. Is that Proper lighting, a boat ramp on the West Branch that we all paid for. This could be a very valuable business in the community and the village ought to try and help them get some sort of a small business loan or grant and put them in one of the empty storefronts where they're not going to disrupt the community. Thank you. You're welcome. I will leave this for your files. Right, I'm gonna, so on that note, I'm going to read the note for the person that was not able to be here tonight. Uh, Eleanor Palmer, uh, elderly resident. I hope she doesn't hate me for calling her elderly. Um, <laughs> um, very nice lady. You can say mature. Mature. Uh, um, my house is across the street from Zach Backus' house. <clears throat> I have not experienced any issues with the kayak new rental business, such as noises or excessive traffic. However, Lower Griswold Street is in a single residential district and has experienced uh, many problems over the years, as well as major flooding in 1996 and 2006. Uh, it goes on to say, therefore, having kayaks and canoes in the front yard and driveway is not a good idea, a uh, good place to store boats. Presently, they are contained in the backyard, which is a much better location for the ambience of the neighborhood and safety of the street. If a use variance is, uh, is granted, it should be only for the duration of the specific business, the business and when the rentals are discontinued. If there's signage, it should be small and uh, can't quite read that, unintrusive. Um, I appreciated the tone of, of this letter uh, because it's a, it's a compromising tone. She's lived there on that street all her life, uh, not, well, not all her life, but for many years. Um, but I, I agree, you know, if we do grant a variance, you know, to have some sort of business operation, hours, hours of operation. I think that would be a good way to address some concerns and meet some middle ground. Um, but uh, just wanted to share that. That's it. Hi, would you like to speak to me? Excuse me? Hi, would like to speak to you. You gotta make it short. I'm gonna give you my 14 page diatribe so you can read it, hopefully. And I'm going to just short, yes, I'll make it short, with some zoning. Uh, notes. We know what the zoning things are. We know the laws. We know the rules. We we had them already. Your husband just read all this stuff. I'm not going to go through this all again. Well, I have other things. And, and if it's only yes. about a kayak that we're talking about. Yes, we're talking about kayaks, and we're talking. I'll give you a couple minutes, and that's it. Then we're going to stop down. Okay. First is the residential recreational district, which we don't live in anyway. But the basis they're using is um, is this. 
that recreational uses or facilities commercially operated, blah, blah. It says, provided no such use, structure, or accessory use is located closer than 100 feet to any adjoining property lines. Well, neither of our properties is even 100 feet. Okay, that's the point I want to make on that. Um, so, if you're going to follow your own zoning and enforce your own zoning, that's what it says. So, they don't even rise to the level of a minor or a major home occupation. And if it were a home occupation, I could be content with that. It would be a lot less invasive to the neighborhood. The noise would be less. It says the occupation shall be carried on wholly within the principal building to an area equivalent to no more than 20% of the floor area. Well, that's not possible because they've got all those kayaks. There shall be no exterior display or sign, except as permitted under the requirements, requirements of the district. So, no sign. The occupation shall not produce any offensive odor, noise, smoke, dust, heat, electrical interference, or glare. So we've got that 24-7. Uh, no more than one commercial type vehicle shall be used in connection. So you know, I'm making the point, they don't even rise to a minor or a major home occupation. That should send warning bells to you. How do we work around this? It is not a plausible use for a, resi a single family residential district. Finally, um, I, I wanted to say, and I'm going to hand this to you, and put this in the minutes, and I hope everybody reads it like they read that lady's. Uh, the Eleanor. Last, Eleanor, I have not met her. Uh, those are my comments that uh, certainly deserve your attention for the reading. For once, I will save you the reading of them uh, verbally now. But I want to say that all the lights that they have on between the kitchen that's never gone off, the garage which never has gone off, the floodlights, which have never gone off, and the air conditioners, which has never gone off, they could save a whole lot of money with all that vampire electricity. Uh, and the lights coming into my backyard, I could read about. But that has nothing to do with the kayaks. It has everything to do. They've got those lights on their kayaks. And their and their air conditioner too. Excuse me. And their lights in the kitchen too have in to do with the kitchen. Yes. Have to do with the kayaks. And and their air conditioner has to do with the kayaks too. And the lights the in the kitchen? The promise of the past is the promise of the future. Okay. Here are right. three studies of endocrine health. They're ruining my health and every animal that lives sad enough to live around them or near them. Okay. Vampires. No, I said vampire electricity. You know, they put a power plant up two miles from my house in Orange County. Yeah, I know her. Yeah. That filthy power plant ever gives everybody asthma, kills us all, ruins the value of our homes, blah, blah, blah. But somewhere, a power plant is running to have all those lights on that shine on us, and we seem to have no choice. We have no choice about keeping our property dark, and that's not right. And so, yes, that is tied in with their kayaks down right, in the backyard. Thank you very much. No. Well, I, I find I'm sad that everybody is predisposed toward a kayak business in a residential district next to one of the nicest houses in town, and you're going to be tearing down our home. It's the wrong decision. As I said, use our tax dollars and give them a business or something on, on Main Street where they belong. And all those bright kayaks can live on Main Street. Okay? And the noise and the lights. Thank you. I am seriously okay. perplexed by these arguments. I, I, would you, you, would you care to say anything? You wouldn't be perplexed. No, we're good. Know. Huh? We're good. I, I, I did We're speak good. to one of your other neighbors, and some of the complaints are valid. Now, you do have two lights in your backyard that do shine both of your neighbors, correct? No, I'll, I'll, st I'll actually, Zach Backus. Um, the lights in my backyard have nothing to do with my kayak businesses because I don't like my neighbors. Um, they don't shine at my neighbor's house, they shine at my property. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just tired of being turned into the code enforcement officer three to four times a week about something they don't like, my air conditioner being on, you know, I park funny in my driveway. You know, it's just a constant, we're, we're at the point where we're ready to file harassment charges because our neighbors just won't leave us alone. I mean, it's like borderline obsessive at this point. We step outside, they take pictures of us. They take pictures um, of our kids. Well, you know, so we excuse, were, we, we we talk excuse, to excuse me, wait, hold it on a minute. You had time to talk and no one interfered with you, I believe. 
they won't even talk for a couple of minutes. Only about the kayak. You know, mm -hmm. the other issues. We, well, Dick we asked him a direct question about the lights. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Question. Well, let Josh speak to that. To the lights? Do, do they shine on, on your neighbors? I haven't seen that. I hear of it. They both have met. One shines that. at the back of my property, the other shines yeah. on my porch. So, no. Clem's house is totally white and lit up. And shines back on us from the other. You gotta remember, we have a six foot fence between us with shrubs growing over the top of However, so. and we and so. planted six also, trees. Um, we've been doing this for five years. Um, oh, we've, uh, could I stop you there? Mm -hmm. So you've been illegal for five yes, years? Yes, five years. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, you're just so, now, you're but so, nobody, so, but nobody has no, said that. When we started the business, we talked to Steve Doctor, and Steve said we could run it out of our residence as long as it didn't take up more than 20% of our residence. So four years later, he comes to us and tells us we're in violation of outdoor okay. storage. I, I think, and that's why we're here today. What she explained when you said 20% of your residence, you're talking about the inside a inside a building. Yes, but and, that is true. Whole and that's why we're yeah. here for that's why we're here that's for outdoors right. the variant for outdoor storage. Um, so when they had moved in, Steve had said the issue was they didn't like the look of them. They were on the other side of the house in the driveway between us and Randy, the gentleman next door. Okay. Um, so as Steve said, just put them out back, out of sight, out of mind. We, we won't even have to think about it again. Um, so we moved them out back. Um, it obviously didn't stop. Um, we've spoken to all the neighbors and, and nobody has had an issue. Honestly, um, I can think of one time where traffic was, was a problem and, and only for a minute. And I immediately said, like, oh, you can't park there, you can't park up on the curb, we've got to, you know, we've got to move things along. Um, I can't control everything that everybody does when they pull in the driveway, but I try. It um, would be no different than if anybody who visited any residence on that block accidentally, on purpose, parked on the wrong side of the street because they didn't know better. On the other side, on the other end of our street, there's parking on both sides for some reason. Yeah, it's because not, the signs were taken down yeah. because somebody who worked in the village right. wanted cars right. there. Right. <laughs> and that was you know my I mean? right so when I got on this board. <laughs> and guess what? Yeah. So. Okay. Well, yeah, I say, this isn't something that just came up. No, we've been doing this. has been going on for five years. Our business has. Okay. A legal business. It's a legal business. Well, we run under a legal license. We pay our taxes because someone someone reported us and we got audited last year. Yeah, by the IRS. By the IRS. So, I mean, we got audited by the IRS because... So he's said asking a more specific tax. question. Which yeah. is I, I, I'm just saying sure. that I understand it, but in the meantime, it's actually been a, the business itself may be legal. This location is, is the question that we have. Right. Exactly. Nobody's questioning whether you can legally rent kayaks. Right. Right. And just, just out of curiosity, if we didn't have a business, we could have that many kayaks. We could just let friends use them as they chose. We That's wouldn't. We wouldn't we need to get rid of all the kayaks. We could store them, we could store them right. wherever we want. In wanted. our driveway. That's very true. You can have all the kayaks yeah. you want, okay. and you can run all the lights you want mm -hmm. if you don't have a business. Right. Where is it going to take? Is it going to take us to put bigger, higher lights up? Where does it all end? We have rights too. Okay. I mean, you have any other? I, 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 okay. No. No. Say, no, say yeah. what you got to say. Part of your problem seems to be yes. You, you have a problem with your neighbors. Uh, have you tried to accommodate your neighbors? It started from day one. It was just unbearable. We, so we have. <laughs> so are the air conditioners. We it, can't it's sleep. It's excessive. The amp, the, my, I run my air conditioner too much. The lights are too bright. The orange kayaks are blinding. My That's kitchen right. light is too much. It's, we have we have unregistered vehicles. We have a unregistered truck frame in our driveway. That's it. Um, we have a trailer that is registered. And the other one, we just keep boats on. We don't use it. It's just ex it's everything, and it, like at some point, it has to be harassment. I have to just be able to live my life without somebody taking Some pictures of me. Well, you would take that up with the with the police, not with us. And and anything else about the kayak? You have any other questions about the kayak? Do you, anybody else? Any questions? No. If I have a real quick question, if yes. I may. Um. Was the business in existence when you moved in? It was in the winter. We, we bought the house in. in January. But yes. I had no idea. 
We found out about the business on Mother's Day when 20 kayaks came out of the garage. So you got we had family on our back deck and it was a gasoline powered pressure washer that ran the entire day on Okay, Monday. we don't need the... Okay, that's kayak yeah. business. But when, when did you buy your house? January 2020. 2020, so just the last two years. Yes. Right, so you have been year. doing this before then. Right. Uh, June 2017. Okay. Barbara, I just wanted to say when when I came to the village to look at my home, I was never shown my home on a school day. Yeah. And I live around the corner from the elementary school, which is the fire drill six times a day. But I didn't know that because school wasn't in session. Correct. You see my point? Mm -hmm. But the school was this there. Is, but this is a, a, an illegal a zoning offense. They shouldn't even be allowed to be to ad address any board if they're in violation, and they are in violation. It's very simple. It says it in. We don't live code. in. We don't live in a communist country. Everybody has a right to address the board. Yes, yeah. that's so, right. So don't say they don't have a right to address the board. They do. I didn't say that. I didn't say that. I said your rules say that if you're in your violation, your own zoning you says come before the board. Right. If they're in violation, we no. can make those rules. It's written right in here. No one has found these people in violation of anything. That's the sad part because there's no equal enforcement across everything, and that gets a town in trouble. There has to be equal enforcement of the law. But just Gosh, as you, just as you presumed, have you, have you learned that in your all your classes? Just as you presumed that this is a, a board that's partisan in your eyes, and that we're predisposed to rule in a favor that's not liking to your argument. That was an aspersion cast right across this table. I don't know if my colleagues heard that, but I did. And that says a lot about the credibility of the presenter of the argument. Oh Just please keep that in mind Did as you implore questions? the help what? of God yeah, while you're sitting there. Uh, you got any more questions, Dick? No. Here's my thought. If whatever the board decides to do, because they decide first, and I'm, I'm, if it's a tie, I'm the deciding vote. If they decided for some reason to allow you to do this, there would have to be regulations and rules that you have to follow. Because if we're going to give a variance for this, it has to be. Like your hours would have to be something like, um, say, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m., something to that effect, like five, five months a year from maybe uh, April to October. And, and, and then that, other than those times, there would not be an effect, something to that effect. Also, the kayaks would have to be in the backyard, mm -hmm. not displayed in the front. And if you were going to put any kind of small signage to put there, it would have to come down. It wouldn't be permanent. It would have to be something that would come down when you're not in business. That's just what I, talking to the attorney and asking and getting some input as to what to do. That would be if everybody is so disposed to, to do something like that. I mean, I don't, anybody else want to add anything in or? I just want two answers. I want an answer from the Myers, what they're, what they're asking for, and I want an answer from the Bacchuses, what they're asking for. Simplified. Okay, that's. Mr. and Mrs. Myers, what are you asking for? I'd like the Compli business moved. Compliance with the village code. With your own code. The ZBA was right. Move this is them. a valuable business for Move the community. Move them to the business district. The business district. Give them some money. Give them our tax dollars. Put them in a building. Bring some business to Main Street. Bright color kayaks. Bring some people. So why, did, why didn't the ZBA? Why didn't the ZBA shut it down? At because that the point? county shut the meeting down is inappropriate. Yes, There that's were no right. minutes taken. Okay. The meeting was closed. Okay. Mm -hmm. There were no they records. Sent no minutes. They sent it to the so planning So basically, board. your request is that we not grant anything. Board, right. Right. Put it on Main Street. Put it on Street. Okay. Well, I mean, just that, that's, that's, that's the answer to that question. They didn't say that. Look at the amazing yeah. boat ramp. Okay. Okay. And and okay. And now, your request is, simply put. So we we basically run. We usually do most of our business. Memorial Day to Labor Day. Um, we kayak a lot, so we still want to be able to use our kayaks whenever we want. Um, but from May, June, July, August, September, May to September, um, and we're okay with following um, hours of operation. That does 
I mean, we, that we never rent until noon to... every day anyway, so Downtown. let's bump it in the morning. I don't know what that's all about. But we rent at noon. Okay. All right. So that's what you're looking for. And it's usually a noon till dark. You know, people drop them off as, as they're done with them. Or, you know, it, we might, I know that I, I seen the picture and I know everybody's seen the picture, but that was when we brought them out. Brought them in the front lawn. Okay, to no, we're, we're not going to get into the whole thing again. That's yeah. but we, we don't. We haven't been storing in any from the street. You cannot see a kayak from our house that it belongs okay. to the business. So, so you've heard from both. What recommendations we have from the board? What does the board want to do? Well, are you done with your public hearing? What? Are you done with your? Oh yeah, we're done hearing? with the public hearing. I need a motion. Motion. I'm motion. Second. Second. <coughs> All in favor? Aye. Okay. Now, I need a motion to do one of two things. Does anyone want to make a motion? Well, in my mind, they've gone through the, uh, the process, speaking to the ZBA, right? Mm -hmm. And the planning board as well. And if it was not shut down at that point, that gives me I mean, I respect people's work on both of those boards, and uh, I think there's there's a way that we can make this work, honestly, in my opinion. <clears throat> uh, how would we figure out the uh, hours of operation to <coughs> stipulate that? Can that be made in the form of a motion, or does that need to be... Yes, you could. You could you could say that uh, Memorial Day to Labor Day uh, from uh, eight until dark, or eight o'clock, whatever it may be, and uh, kayaks would be only in the backyard, nothing in the front, and uh, it's just my my thought. Yeah. And um, what about signage? a signage, a small sign that would be removable when the business is not in operation. When yes. Giffords came to the board and asked for a variance for mixed use for their lot up there on Stockton Avenue, did we do the same thing? What do you mean? He they asked for a variance. For the house, right, because they wanted to sell his house Change the use of the, yeah. of the, did we go through all the stipulations and? Uh, they actually redistrict the whole zone over there. I couldn't remember what the yeah. outcome was. Yeah, we did the whole thing over there. The, the question I would have, and, and she did bring it up, and, and so far as I know, that is correct, that uh, for to, to meet the requirements of the zoning board, that the business is supposed to be contained within in your house, let's say a doctor's office, a hairdresser. Uh, I happen to have a neighbor who is a physical therapist, she doesn't have to have more parking that because she can only have one client at a time. Uh, and they, they do, their business has to be contained within the house. But they don't even rise, they don't meet the qualifications. I, I understand that because there are stipulations of which are targeted and like that. But that's really something the zoning board should have, should have directed their, their attention to. Mm -hmm. The zoning say, no, board sent it to the planning board because it didn't meet the condition. It would not meet the conditions. Right. So it went, they're, they're that's there, why so we're doing a conditional use. Right. Because it didn't go through the variance process. Yeah. It wouldn't meet the variance requirements. Doesn't need conditional So I, I guess, and, and I'm, I'm opposed to, to spot zoning. It, it gets you in a lot of trouble. Because if we give you a spot zone and say, okay, you can run a business out of your home, the next person comes in and, you know, they want, want to run a garage out of their home. And that gives us, you know, well, we can't object to that because we didn't object to somebody else's. So it puts us in a bad position. And, and uh, you know, I, I, you have my sympathy. Can, can I say one more thing? Sure. Th this is a business, this is a business that uh, we go to the fair every year and spend, you know, I spend 12, 1200 bucks every year for a spot at the fair mm -hmm. to raffle off a kayak for a youth wrestling group here in town. And uh, without this business, that wrestling group does not exist. So it's not just, if this business gets shut down, it just ain't, I don't, honestly, I don't profit a lot from this business. I did it for, you know, 
the people need kayaks. We kayak all the time, and we always had people asking for, you know, I want to go kayaking with you. I don't know where to get a kayak. We got kayaks. But uh, without this business, there's other things that fail in this town. There's dozens of people in this town that, I hate to say it, depend on this business. Clemens. To go down Clemens. the river. Which is kayak business right. next Clemens. to that. the business right next door on the other side. We could handle this the way we handled the Gifford issue and rezone that entire section, just the way we rezoned Stockton Avenue. You can't just rezone. We can. We did it on Stockton Avenue and we can do it on Griswold Street. Yeah, we did it before. Yeah, you can. And it wouldn't be spot anything mm -hmm. because the end of Griswold Street is commercial anyway. But you're not rezoning. Right. Could make it look like Benton Avenue. You could have bought wow. a house in Benton Avenue. No, going back and forth. So you have, isn't there another business right across the street on Griswold? Clem's bed and breakfast. Clem used to have the bed and breakfast. The bed and breakfast, mm -hmm. right? There was a bed and breakfast over there, right? Mm -hmm. That was there. Anymore. It hasn't for years. Well, not for three many years, but it was there, and it wasn't there. But it was quiet, and he made his house more attractive. <coughs> okay. So, and nobody took his picture on a regular basis. So we need a motion. What are we going to do? What does the board want to do? I make a motion to grant the conditional use to the Bacchus family. If someone disagree with me, so be it. If someone doesn't want a second, that's fine, but that's my motion. Second. <laughs> so now we have a second on my motion to grant a conditional use to the Bacchuses. Do we want to, in the motion, add ours yes. or anything? It should be in the motion. Say like um, uh, Memorial Day to Labor Day from mm -hmm. 9 a.m. till 8 or something like that. It covers most of the day. And at the sign. Well, the motion could be with hooks. It could have stipulations that they'd have to come in and iron out with the code officer at a later date. Yeah, we could do that. Okay, so you made a motion, and there is a second. Is there all in favor of that? Aye. Aye. Well, yeah, aye is three. Opposed? Aye. Three to one. Dixon, okay. So that's passed. So you have to come in and speak to the code guy and we'll give you the conditions and everything. And um, the Mr. and Mrs. Bank, if you have issues with the other particular things, Josh needs to address that firmly with you. And I, I, no one needs to have lights in their house pointed at them. I'm not saying that they are, because I'm not there, I don't see it. But if that happens, that's wrong, and it should be corrected. I have a picture from my kitchen window. Well, I don't need a picture. I'm, I'm not here to judge that. I'm just saying, if you said that, I'll take your word on it. And if, if there's excessive noise, well, then maybe we don't have a noise ordinance in the village, but we're, maybe we should get one. I have an issue I'm going to bring up on that as well later on. Um, but we got to fill in this now. Okay, and who was going to fill it's in? in this part two. You guys have to do it together. Who? The board. Oh, okay, afterwards? No, now. Just the part two, this part. Okay. It's the environmental review that we need to do. Yep. Mm -hmm. I look at it, I, don't, I have nose, but you know, you look at it. Second part that we have the second page you're going to look at. <coughs> well, 
I'll let everybody look at it first, and then we'll fill it all in. Well, let, that's, that's a start. Okay, yeah, just take a look at the back. I don't think you'll like it. <laughs> huh? You won't like what you're reading. Why won't I like it? Just read them, and we'll, you can fill it out as we as you read them. The front and the back. Just oh. the part two is all you need yeah, to do. Yeah, just a bunch of it here, because who's the other? Mr. Mersey has to be present to fill this out. No. The board does. No, it does. It's just a short thing. Short thing, Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the planning board. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, as far as what they're trying to do, it doesn't make any difference that it, that, but you do have to go on. It isn't a change. Whatever they filled out, the actions are all the rest of the bikes are going to be the same except for us to sign. Yeah. Their quality, aesthetics, vegetation, existing plans. Has a site visit been done? So just read them and we can. <coughs> Allowed? Does action exceed any type threshold in six NYCRR part seven? No. No. Nope. Will action receive coordinated review as provided for unlisted actions in the six NYCRR part? No. Mm -mm. Could action result in any adverse effects associated with the following? I can't remember, my eyes are getting bad. Existing air quality, surface, groundwater quality, noise levels, existing traffic pattern, mm -hmm. solid waste production. Um, aesthetic, agricultural, historic, other natural cultural resources, vegetation, fish, shellfish, wildlife species, community existing plants, or goals, or, if, or as visually adopted or changed, in, or use or intensity, growth, substantial, subs subsequent development, or related activities like to be induced in proposed action, long-term, short-term, cumulative, or other effects not identified, other impacts. Will the project have impact to the environment? Is there, is there, or is there likely to be controversy? Controversy related to potential adverse environment impacts. Yep. I think those are all. No, the all environmental know. impacts. Yeah. Really the other side gets okay. you, you did a site plan review with the zoning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we turned in our site. Yeah, we right. had filled that out. Right. Yeah. I mean, it had a negative impact, but right. but it did require change in permits and zoning mm -hmm. and some other stuff. Okay. Just location of where we were keeping our kayaks. Okay. Okay, are there any other questions on you guys want to discuss any other? You were the applicant, correct? What's that? You were the applicant, correct? Yeah, you were right. 
I think you were. I was. You're the bad guy. Yeah, the rest is just fine. Yeah. It has yeah. no environmental. Yeah. So then I just need a motion from the board that we've done the sequer and there's no environmental impact. So moved. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. That's it? Yep. All right, this part is done. You can leave. You can say you'll leave. Thank you guys for your time. Thank you. The code enforcement will going to be in touch with you. All right. Um, number three, I'm going to skip two for a moment. Number three, the abstracts, payment of the invoices. You all had a chance to take a look at them. We need a motion. Make a motion that we approve and pay the abstract. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Carried. Department heads, public works, Mr. Smith. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Everybody got my report? Any questions? Yes, Concerns? Oh, that yeah, last I line. Continue to bless you all. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Which which one? The surplus equipment one? Yeah. Yep, this month. I only got two more pictures to go. <laughs> yeah, let's sell the surplus equipment. Yep. I like that. We had one of our wells redeveloped. Um, and they did find a couple of issues while they're here. Um, the motor was leaking oil, so we had to have that sent out and have that repaired. Um, and they also found uh, one of the pipes had like a small crack in it, the casing itself was starting to erode. So they took care of that, but all in all, really wasn't too bad. This well hadn't been redeveloped in so long because we've had issues mm -hmm. with other wells, so it kept getting put on the back burner. Um, but it's done now, and everything seems to be working really good. So. Which well? Uh, Curry well number four. It's the one right behind McDonald's. Thank you. What is a PFOAS? So those are new tests that we have to um, check find, for. Did you find a cheaper place to do this? Actually, this place has been, it's the only place that we have that can do them, but okay. they are cheaper than what was originally talked about. Um, it's a chemical that we have to test for, so it's it's something that's used in like fire suppression, um, scotch guard, it's something that can go into the air and then it rains, um, ends up in the water. Our area, very, very unlikely that it's going to be polluted that way, um, but they have no idea. So the first year we have to test every quarter and it was, ended up being about 1800 bucks extra in testing every quarter that we have to do. So if we test negative for two quarters in a row, then we only have to do it once annually because the Department of Health has really no guidelines to go by. Um, the testing, most of the water test is done in parts per million. These ones are parts per trillion. So not very many labs can do those tests. The lab that we use is actually in Connecticut. It actually even has to farm out some of those tests to somebody else. Um, and we've tested negative the first two quarters. We just completed the third quarter, and it's, it's such a, a, a test that when you go and you do the test, you're not supposed to wear anything with Gore-Tex in your shoes. You have to wear rubber gloves when you're doing a test. They don't want you wearing deodorant. They don't want you washing your hair with shampoo and conditioner. Um, your clothes are supposed to be clean with no soap or fabric softener. So they're very, it's a very easily contaminated test so what they do they also give you a, a field blank that is known good water that you actually have to take and pour into another bottle with the rubber gloves on so what that test does and that that test alone is 200 bucks that test just verifies so if that hits a positive that there's a, an issue that basically says that me or whoever's doing a test did the test wrong it contaminated the, the source um thank you detroit yeah, that's exactly what happens. But they had a big hit of it up in um, the Albany area, north of Albany. But they have a plant up there that was making that, that type of product. Um, but like I said, Department of Health has, they really have no guidelines to go by. So the first year of testing, I believe they said it's supposed to be very strict. So it gives them a guideline and what to do. So supposedly, if we test negative two quarters in a row, which we've already have, um, we only have to do the test once annually instead of four. 
<clears throat> so they kind of sprung it on us. Of course, it was after our budget was all passed, and it was just another state mandate that we have to swallow. So. Okay. <clears throat> um, we got our paving done. Didn't have any issues there. Um, and everything's pretty good otherwise. Hopefully, if some of the rain stops, we get some of the other stuff done before winter gets here. <clears throat> <coughs> you heard we should be getting some of your, you know, 200000 finally from DASNY. They're working on the, the, sun, yep. the state center is working on that. Yep, yep. So that'll be another another project. Yep. Um, is Curry 4 the one we're <coughs> planning to use the stimulus funds for? Or is That That will be uh, Curry 3 replacement. Curry 3. Yep, yep. It's located at the same... Yes. Geography. Yep. That Curry Three right now is behind CVS, and if we have to uh, put another hole in the ground, it's going to be just same field, possibly. <coughs> Aquifers two hundred feet away or something like that, right, right. from, from <laughs> the brook. <coughs> Middle water street. Yeah. <laughs> so it could be in the green space. It could be in the fountain woods somewhere, wherever it may land. So. <coughs> um. Hope it doesn't end up on the other side of the river. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that'd be pretty expensive piping that. Yeah, we looked over there. We didn't find any water yeah. over there. Oh, no. Yeah, we already been. We've been there. Man. We, we looked there already. Quite a few years ago now. Ten feet, you'll find water. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not the right kind, though. Lots over there, fairly. Um, I just discuss. Right back in the army, there's a well. Oh no, it's a swamp. Um, Matt needs hours toward his renewal for his water license um, and that is an online course for 10 hours and it's $225 to do the course. Um, there's a very, very, very strong possibility that myself and probably a couple other guys are going to have to go through the same thing because we normally do trainings in Sydney twice a year and with the COVID they have not been doing them. Mm -hmm. um, we would have one coming up next month and I haven't heard if we're having it or not having it. Um, and those courses, I believe, are usually like 25 bucks a person to go. But if they're not having them, now we do an online course, and they're about 225 bucks. Wow. Matt and I need 30 hours for every three years, and then the other three guys we have that have a D license, they're required to have 15 hours every three years. So you wouldn't have to do it as, as often as Matt and I, obviously. But um, So hopefully, we <coughs> get back up and going over in Sydney. So you need uh, permission for, for Matt, right? For today, yes, for Matt. For, for Matt. right for today, just for Matt. Yep. And it's all budget for, it, right? I think. Yeah. You have a thousand dollars on your trading line. No. <coughs> we need, a, we need, a, need a motion. I for move that we approve Matt Meyer to Second. complete the online water Second. license. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. And that's all I have. <coughs> Thank you, sir. Leaf season, sir. Leaf season. Don't no sing if you do well, because then snow follows. That's right. <laughs> Josh? Did you need permission to put this in place to put it No, we did that already. We did it already. I don't really have too much. Uh, since the last meeting, I've been in two weeks of training. Uh, tomorrow, I have some uh, state testing. September 20th, I go back in for more training. I'll be in for another week, and then after that, I got one more training week, and that's in October. And then I'll, I'll be fully certified with that. Um, just been busy uh, drowning in complaints, but um, working on it. So that's about it. Uh, does anyone have anything for me here? I don't. Nothing. Does anybody else have anything? I want to. I've been real happy to have you on board. <laughs> yeah. Yep. I wanted to thank you for your work with, with Ostruck and other yep. businesses in the community. Yep. Yep. I'm uh, pretty proud of all those, you know, coming up and everything, be a part of it and seeing Walton grow. You yep. know, it's, it's pretty awesome. So I'd like to see it grow further and clean it up more. But it's a. Uh, process well, one at a time that's all you can do yeah well the yep. outstanding complaints end up going to court in the foreseeable future yes they will be and uh i'm following through with one that started with dan and uh it's not looking good for him mm -hmm. so um yeah and that will hopefully clean up 
two of our biggest eyesores in the village. So that's it. Well, thanks for doing that. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Jason. Everybody get my report. I guess, sir. Any questions? Always straightforward. The only thing I have to um, report on is, um, I believe I emailed. I don't know if I emailed everybody or not, but the uh, issue we had with the generator test. Uh, we tested the generator when we transferred power. Um, a blower kicked back on. It blew apart a disconnect. Um, we called Taggart Electric in, who happened to be at Kraft, which was pretty handy. So they came right over, and uh, the disconnect was completely fried. It could it possibly caused issues with the uh, blower motor as well. Um, the disconnect itself was a seven thousand dollar fix that included labor. Um, Didn't we prove that at the last? Different deal. Oh, it was a different. Deal. Deal. Yeah. So I just I deemed that an emergency right then because it puts us now we do not have a spare blower, so it's it's kind of a um, a big deal here. So he got that in the works. Um, Jody contacted the insurance company. I spoke with them, and they're currently working on that. And uh, looks like hopefully they'll cover this instance. So um, we won't know really until we get the power restored to this unit whether or not the motor was damaged if the motor was damaged it could be expensive uh, it yeah. could get a lot worse so um hopefully no more in the next couple weeks and of course with the parts and everything the way they are i was quite shocked that he had uh, like a three-week turnaround time so i was pretty impressed with that so we're working on that that's really um the big thing right now craft is shut down fair week they're planning another shutdown here this month um so the plant's been you know pretty good um in typical weekly hits but um you know we're handling it so other than that no major issues at this time early christmas not too long ago yeah yeah With the bubbles. lots of bubbles yeah and we haven't had that thankfully because that was quite a mess mm -hmm. um we didn't get violation for the last turbidity we we were in violation and turned in when we're in violation, we have to turn in, uh, turn that into the state, but and the EP, but they haven't come back with anything on that yet. So, well, that's good. If they haven't yet, I'm. It'd be my educated guess that they're not going to, but we all know how these entities work. So. Yeah, we're gonna we're going to discuss later about crap, and because we got a lot of extra expenses because of their spills and everything, and I, I think that they should uh, put in some money for that. Yeah, I'm, when they're outside of their normal scope, when they're doing things they shouldn't be doing, you're, the chemical usage is doubled. And we track that daily. So we can see it when they're not in operation, what it is. And then when they fire back up, here's what it is. And then when it goes over, here's what it is. So I know last month's chemical bill was quite high. So yep. is, the, is the minutes over the turbidity, turbidity limit having to do with last month's incident, or, or is that just the this month um no that's the same situation, same situation. It, it's the way it's going right now on a saturday sunday they're off for the weekend monday tuesday they fire up <clears throat> and then by about wednesday we see increase in chemical usage increasing turbidities and then that goes and we have to start adding more chemical to the first stage of the sand filters and we have to add second stage chemical as well which it's not designed for but we make it work we've added pumps and we make it work so we can do that to stay under our permit um, there's a maximum set point that we can go on our chemicals otherwise those chemicals can plug the filters and then it's a whole nother nightmare so there's just there's a max we can get to and once it's over that that's all we can do with it and away it goes so those those numbers in the report are due to that okay so hopefully that answered your question yes okay that's it i have no thank you. no request for purchases this month so that's it that's good hey. <laughs> thank you you're welcome thanks, thanks Jeff. Well. Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah, it's, most of it was um, that contract from TWC, <laughs> so I'm not going to read that line for line. Um, That's yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll get out of here before 10 o'clock. Maybe. Um, 
So a couple of irons in the fire um, at the wastewater plant. We know we have a couple of funding applications and we're open to hear back um, here by the end of the year. Uh, one ongoing um, project or maintenance item is the grit screw. Uh, the board authorized purchase of parts for that um, and I believe they came in here in the last couple of weeks. Um, so we're going to look to have those uh, bearings and maintenance work done with that reconstruction who installed the grit screw um, over the course of the next couple of weeks. So uh, that'll be good. On the water project, uh, we'll talk about a couple of different things. Um, so when I say the water project, the village was awarded um, fund uh, 1.2 million in funding to go towards a $2 million project. Uh, we've been waiting on the state for the last year and a half because of um, everything that's happened in the last year and a half. Uh, at this point, our schedule is that we'll close on the financing in November of this year, um, which it, that that allows us access to that to those funds and formally locks them into place and allows the project to kick off. Um, so, provided we start in <coughs> November, then we'll start with survey and um, start working on the design and an effort to be building next year. Um, so that project is replacing water lines, um, working on Curry Well uh, Four, um, and work at the well uh, the water tanks. Um, so that's in the works. Uh, paperwork with the state. Uh, the other water-related item uh, is separate from the base water project, uh, but following up on, on Butch's report, um, Curry Well 3 um, is the one behind CVS. Um, that well's been in place since the 1960s. Uh, the well house was reconstructed uh, in 2010, uh, roughly, and that's we have a USDA financing um, in place uh, for that, but the well itself, <coughs> the casing, uh, where the water comes out of, um, remain the same. We put a new pump in and whatnot, but um, that well has been in place for a long time, um, and the production rate has dropped significantly from what it used to be, and the maintenance costs have rid risen dramatically from you know what we would hope a well of that nature to be. So uh, I think I know it's been a discussion um, regarding the ARPA funding, the potential of an investment in the Curry Well area um, in an effort likely to redrill uh, or drill a new well or replacement well in the vicinity of the existing building, maintain compliance with all the rules and regulations we have to comply with with regards to setbacks from the stream and river, um, sewer lines, um, compliance with New York State Department of Health, DEC, Delaware River Basin Commission, um, and there's probably a few other um, agencies out there that are, are uh, involved in it. Um, we put together uh, kind of a, a rundown or a starting point, um, and I won't go through the whole thing, um, but starting starting that process is, is really engaging with a, a hydrogeologist, which is an expert in that field in groundwater. Um, so we've been in, in contact with Sterling Environmental, it's a, a firm we've worked with a number of times in uh, out of the Albany area, something they specialize in. Um, and they're looking at preparing a scope to help coordinate that uh, well installation, um, starting with test wells. So, you know, before you drill a 16-inch well that can get 500 gallons a minute, we want to make sure that there's nothing in the area that we don't know about that we should be concerned with. Uh, so we would start the process with putting in test wells, um, two or three or four test wells in that vicinity uh, to see what the water looks like in the aquifer. Is it the... the um, the amount that we want to get out can it can it furnish enough water, and uh, does it meet all the health, uh, the Department of Health standards that we have to meet? Um, so PFOAs is one of the new things that we have to test for as of February of this year. Um, everybody in the state got a letter from the health department saying test for this um, going forward. So there's a litany of other things that get tested for um, to make sure we're in compliance. And the goal would be to maintain the existing treatment building that the village invested in 10 years ago, keep the building, keep the equipment, um, keep the electric and, and whatnot in that building, and just have a well outside, and then just have the water pump in, have it treated, and then go out to the distribution system. Um, so it saves having to build a new building, which is what we'd have to do if we went to another area of the village. Um, that's something we, we looked at in, in uh, 2008 and 2010 um, was potentially siting a new well in a new area. We looked at a number of areas on the other side of the village trying to diversify our water supply. We put test wells in in a number of areas um, and didn't strike gold. So we ended up staying in our current facility um, and upgraded that and this would look to, to build on that. So, um, does it, uh, Let me ask you a question. Does, does it cost a lot to check like the dig 
like we did, we went in, what was it, like eight years ago, we went on the other side. Mm -hmm. Can that change, I mean, over time, or I, I don't know, I'm right. not an expert, at, or does it primarily stay the same? It, we would expect it to stay the same, you okay. know, unless there's been something to change the the groundwater aquifer in the area. Yeah, okay, um, I, I thought so, but I just wanted to make sure. So it's the it would make sense to go try again. Uh, generally, no. Okay. Um, it's about 16, are you talking about test wells? Yeah. Yeah, 16 grand for? In that range to kind of start the process. Okay. Um, so if, a test, if the test wells, we put them in and, and go through that process and that proves positive, the next step is to put in the big well and do further testing on that, do a 72 hour pump test to make sure that the aquifer can sustain the 500 gallons a minute we want to pump. Um, so it's it's an involved process and then Correct. if that all passes then we submit plans to the health department to connect it to our water system so it's and better than where we are right now so okay, it's it. um, it, it's a process and there's there's a lot of different agencies involved from a number of different avenues so um, a lot of it's just coordination with uh, different agencies okay um, so our, our next step will be you know if, if the village is on board with you know that that route um, <coughs> would be to come back to you guys with a proposal from the hydrogeologist to say this is you know the start of the process and uh, it would get them started to uh, draw up a spec to have test wells installed and then we would have to get bids on having test well you know a well driller would come out and put the test wells in and put pumps in and, and do all of that and then we see where everything shook out and then if it's positive we go to the next step so um, it's a process, like I said, a lot of different agencies involved, but this is kind of the start. Do we need a motion here to get started with it? Um, not, not yet, not until we have a proposal, until, have a proposal. until okay. I can tell you a number in front of you, which, okay. we're, which we're working on right now. So I was in touch with uh, the Sterling today, so okay. we're, we're working through that. Um, on the, another separate project, uh, the Third Brook Bridge, which has been on, the, well, currently the Third Brook culvert, uh, the culvert at the Delaware Street and West uh, Third Brook um, has been a, a target of the Flood Commission for a number of years, at least since the 2006 flood. There's been numerous studies. That's a study from 2008. There have been three or four more d done over the years. Um, trying to get that structure replaced, um, the village applied for money to design a new structure that could accommodate more flood flows and to open that structure up so it's not as sharp a bend and doesn't become a big net um, in flood flood events. The DOT turned us down. Yeah, they're happy to see the project done, but they don't have any money to support it. It's not due for replacement for another 25 years. And the, the way they analyze it, it's currently a, a, a culvert. And a culvert only needs to pass a 50-year storm event. And when you um, do the modeling and the math, that culvert is the right size, <coughs> which is true. The issue becomes when there's a big tree that's coming down the brook, which mm -hmm. obviously happens, the models don't take that into account. And when that tree catches and then the next tree catches, you know, you, you, you get 2006 you get all over again. Yeah. Um, so that's really what this is trying to solve is, is not pass a 50 year clean water event, it's pass a 100 year flood event. Um, is, that, is that a DOT front loader that they're dragging down there every time we get? Yes. Yeah, when that's when there's going to be a storm or in the winter time when the ice is going to go out, they bring a uh, excavator down and park it in. So I think the, that's like a long-term fix. It's like the rough road side. Yes. <laughs> um, it's the. Un unfortunately, that's the direction we've got from DOT, despite years of requests and. Uh, you know, we, we sat in a meeting in 2006 with the uh, director of the region and, you know, this was going to be in the next three years, we're going to replace it. And that was in 2006. And now the answer we get, it's not on our radar. So um, that's how we got to, instead of pushing uh, with DOT to go to alternate funding and CWC has flood hazard mitigation funding available. There's numerous stu studies to support the need for a different structure there. On that basis, CWC awarded the village funding to have a design prepared to replace that structure. Um, so that was approved by CWC. Uh, they issued an 18 page agreement um, to have the board, actually it's longer than that because that didn't include the attachments. Mm -hmm. 
they issued an agreement for the board's consideration to accept the funding and the conditions thereon, which are once you take the money, you have to complete the project, you have to follow all CWC's rules, you have to follow DEP's rules, we have to follow DOT's rules, um, and all the other letters. So uh, we have that option um, in front of us this evening if we want to proceed with the village taking on the, the project to have a design prepared um, to authorize that agreement and that would commit funding from CWC um, to that. Um, and CWC has requested that an RFP be issued by the village to reach out to engineering firms to um, get proposals from folks to prepare a design. RFP. RFP. Request for proposal. Thank you. <laughs> One of the questions we had had is when I, we first got the thing in, the CWC, there was like a clause that said that, that anything over and above what CWC um, tells us the village would be responsible for. And so uh, I spoke to Bill, we spoke to CWC, we had a phone conversation with a bunch of them that if that's what they were saying, then forget about it as far as I'm concerned, because we don't have funds. That bridge could stay there for another 50 years as far as I'm concerned. However, they did come back and say, no, no, we'll, we'll, there won't be any expenses to the village. CWC said that? Yeah. We had a, a conference call with the director of CWC and the, the mayor, the village attorney, CWC's attorney. Because um, with all these projects, they're big, they're multi-year projects, there's a, a litany of stakeholders, private property, all the funding agencies, uh, the regulatory agencies, just on and on and on. Um, we all have this grand plan, we're going to start down the road and we're going to do this, and then we found out we have to make a left turn. So that happens on ev every, you know, that's why they take 10 years. Well, is it because they realized they now had to replace that bridge up on Westbrook there at the top? Um, it's the same body of water. Yeah, I don't, I don't think that played into it. But that's, you know, from a regulatory standpoint, you know, they are, they are looking to commit a, a, a lot of money to the project and are looking to ensure that that is well spent um, and serves its purpose. Yeah, and um, Dave sat in on it too as well to make sure that I heard correctly as right. well. But that was that was the outcome. CWC recognized that there are likely going to be left turns over the course of the project from a you know one of the one of the agencies or one of the um, like I said was has happened with all the the flood reclamation projects um, and their director made a, a commitment to um, say they supported the project and if there's a you know additional um, you know, uh, applicable costs. If, if DOT says we need a standard study, or this agency says we need this, or this agency says you need a different permit that requires that, um, they agreed to to you know go. We have to go through the process and apply for more money, but we would be eligible to come back for additional funding if that were to come about. So that was that was stated by the the director, on which I you know was you know we were we were happy to hear. Um, and I think speaks well to you know their intent and commitment to the project. It does. Not being it, rude, but is that something that's in writing? Um, we don't have that in writing. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't. I don't think we have it. It was just. A, it was a conference call with the different five or six parties. And Dave Merzik was on, as a present for and everything. I mean, um, there's, there's pre they've done it before. Yeah, uh, I mean, with um, you know, with breakies when that went down, you know, the demolition was um, done and that was under a contract and there was a known fee because it was bid out, and then you know I, when the excavation started, you know, a left turn, um, and and more funding was needed to to you know make that you know be completed in the the, the appropriate way and follow all the appropriate regulations. So um, there there is precedent for it. Um, it, there, there is precedent, you know, for legitimate expenses. You can't just go back and say, well, this, this, we had a cost overrun and this guy wants more money or, you know, this took longer for this reason or that. And we, you know, we just, we want an extra, you know, it has to be a legitimate, you, you know, there'd have to be, um, a reason this it. agency or that agency saying this, this is required in order to get a permit or in order to, um, do this. You know, the, the goal, the goal of this step, um, which is, uh, the goal of this step is to have a design prepared 
and permits in place and approval from DOT that this is the fix for this area. This, this isn't to build the fix at this stage. This is to come up with the plan for what the fix is. The new bridge is this big and it's this angle and it can support this much and and we may, you know, if we have to, um, you know, we'd have to look at right-of-ways and access, um, utilities, there's water, sewer, gas, drainage, um, all the businesses that are on every corner there um, work with all those folks to make this work. So all that's, all that's part of this. And then with that in place, um, the idea is to have that as leverage or an opportunity to take that as a selling point to funding agencies like CWC or potentially DOT um, to say we have, our, we have our plan, you know, we're shovel ready, you know, we need construction dollars. I'd make a motion that we second authorize the mayor to. Sorry. For the clerk, not the mayor, the clerk. To just submit the proposal. To the newspaper that's all we're doing right um, no it, the first that, one the first, first one is to, to sign the agreement to say we want to you know okay. uh, undertake the, the village wants to undertake the project and then the second one is to uh, put the ad in the paper for the engineering services yeah my impression from the meetings was that the dot isn't going to do anything if we take the first step maybe maybe yeah They'd eventually take it I think they said after we've done everything, they'll take it over and maintain yes, it. Yes, they, 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 they have agreed to take it over. They, they, they formally yeah. committed to that. If we if we build, if the structure is designed and permitted by them, they review it up, you know, along the way. Um, that it's built to their standard, at the end of the job, they would assume ownership and maintenance of it. And that's what we have in writing, and that's what demonstrated DOT's contribution to the project you know, on, on a life life cycle basis to um, encourage CWC to fund this step. So you're making the motion for both yeah. of them or just yeah. for the I one? Yeah, I recommend it. We authorize the mayor to execute the agreement with CWC. Sign and put it in the paper. And uh, to put, put to I second. The ad in the paper. All in favor? <coughs> Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. That's all I got. There's a couple of the soil and water stuff. Um, You'll see work going on throughout the village, so that's that's encouraging. And the uh, the highway garage uh, project, it looks like it looks like funding's coming through for that, so that can um, allow that project to move forward. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Bill. Thank you, Bill. Chief's not here, so you all have seen his report. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Our officer is back on duty. Yep, I know. Morgan's back. Morgan. <laughs> uh, number five, trustee reports. Steve, why don't we start with you? I have nothing to report. Okay. I have nothing. Okay. Nate? Uh, well, we've wrapped up our summer programs at the park. The, the pool has closed as of Labor Day weekend, so it'll be back open again next year. We'd like to thank everyone who came out to the pool this summer and enjoyed it. We'd like to thank everybody who took part in swimming lessons. And uh, we hope to have a wider array of lessons available next year with, with less COVID restrictions, God willing, and uh, more lifeguards, God willing. And uh, we, uh, a bunch of money was just raised I want to say 2,800, I think, was the number I heard in the uh, the uh, lapsed uh, the, the lapsed swim uh, in Candy Russell's name for uh, lifeguard uh, scholarships to help lifeguards pay for the uh, re required tests and uh, classes to become lifeguards. So that's great news. So hopefully we'll have some more lifeguards in the future, and we'll be able to pr provide more at the pool. And uh, hopefully we'll have a little bit more um, participation in uh, some summer activities next year. Although we had pretty good participation this year. Uh, next month I'll have I'll have uh, numbers as a, as to just how how we did. We just wrapped up, so we don't have all the numbers yet. Uh, at the theater, the theater is very excited to. Uh, oh, and we have of course our fall sports will be coming into Austin Lincoln. So everyone looks forward to, to Pee Wee football games at Austin Lincoln Park and uh, all of the kids coming down for practices. Uh, the theater is very excited to uh, return to uh, having live music. Uh, on September 18th, we're going to have Lauren Yelenovich as our, as our main stage concert. 
Uh, she tours with Yanni as his featured vocalist, uh, performing at sold out venues. When Yanni was on tour in Saudi Arabia, she was the first woman in recent history to sing on stage for a mixed audience of both men and women. So she is kind of a big deal, and she's coming here to Walton on September 18th at 7.30 at the theater. And that will kick off their, uh, their concert series. So we're very excited about that. And uh, that's what I have for... September 13th? September 18th. Thank you. Yes, September 18th at 7.30. Did they finish the renovations? They are mostly finished. Um, there's a little, a little bit left, you know, I think, I think, I, I don't know the exact details of, of whether or not they're a hundred percent done. I'm excited. I haven't seen it. But, uh, and the Manhattan shorts. Soon. The Manhattan shorts are coming up and I don't have the date on the top of my head for that. But yeah, the Ma Manhattan short festival is always very cool. And that is sometime, I believe at the end of this month, it's, it's coming right up. If you look at the, uh, the theater's Facebook page, you'll, 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 you can get the dates for that. Can I do that for a minute so I can use that name correctly? Thank you. Thank you. That's all I have, sir. Okay, thanks. All right. <laughs> Last but not least, are we discussing this now, the uh, surveys, or? Go, well, so right. do whatever you, you know. Okay. So, <clears throat> I'm going to share the uh, results of the surveys. Um, this is not just a stack of paper. This is literally the surveys that we received regarding recreational cannabis use uh, on-site consumption licenses. Um, so just a brief background. This leg legislation gave communities the option to opt in or opt out, permitting adult use cannabis retail dispensaries or on-site consumption licenses from operating within a municipality. Uh, municipalities cannot opt out of adult use legalization, uh, meaning you can cultivate, consume, and possess marijuana in the allotted amounts, even if that municipality decides to opt out of retail sales. Uh, so the town of Walton opted out. People can still cultivate um, that they did not opt out of that. Uh, they cannot legally. Uh, no municipality can. In uh, July of 2021, the Village of Walton decided to survey constituents about this question. In an effort to collect as much input as possible from the public, the survey was constructed by data provided to our municipality from NICOM. Uh, NICOM trains and advises municipal government and elected officials how to operate, or in this case, interpret and understand, understand state law. The survey was mailed with quarterly water bills and was also made available online on our village website and copies were made available also at Village Hall. The results, the village received 359 completed surveys. Of 359 com completed surveys, 20 respondents remained undecided, 129 respondents opposed, opt out, 210 respondents said yes, opt in. Um, there were several Surveys returned with additional commentary written on the form, and uh, I'd make the recommendation that we make them uh, available to view uh, should anyone from the public want to come in and read them. Uh, I don't know if you need a motion for that, but. No. No. Okay. Public records. There you go. <clears throat> uh, Do you mean the numbers again? Yeah. Uh, 20 respondents undecided, 129 opposed, 210. Yes. To opt Thank in. you. Yep. Um, again, in, so the survey itself, the language was uh, was attributed directly from a memo from NICOM, um, verbatim, basically. Jody, how many water bills did we send out? Roughly. About 14, oh. 1400. 14, yeah. Thirteen like ten comes to my 10, mind. Yeah. Yep. Um, give a little comparison. Uh, I, I'm not sure how many people responded to the police reform surveys, but. A hundred? I'm not, I don't recall. It's around, around it's 100, 120. 120, yeah. About 10 percent. Yeah. Uh, so the, the input was quite impressive. <coughs> it's honestly more than people vote of registered voters. Yes. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, Unfortunately, you're right. Yeah. Well, uh, some basic updates. 
uh, on where we stand, where Albany stands. Uh, state leaders recently confirmed Assemblywoman Tremaine Wright to serve as the chair of the Cannabis Control Board. So that's the regulatory body that's going to oversee this. Uh, that had been held up for ever since March by uh, former Governor Cuomo for various uh, political uh, jockeying. So anyway, they're making progress in building that reform body. So that's the Albany update. Um, I had a few notes here about uh, some things that were brought up at the town and some things that were brought up in the county. Uh, and how does this affect communities? Of, you know, if they have a dispensary in the, in the town, how does this affect children? Does it increase consumption? Those types of things. Uh, I personally read a, a number of peer reviewed journals that looked at this. Um, this one in particular was based on a 2013 and 2015 Healthy Kids Colorado survey data, uh, which dealt with permitting recreational cannabis dispensaries <coughs> in a community. And uh, general results of that study did not appear to change student cannabis use or perceptions towards cannabis. Several studies have measured youth cannabis use before, after legalized recreational cannabis in Colorado. Brooks Russell et al. Brooks Russell et al. 2017, date of the study. 2017 found that adolescent cannabis use did not increase from the 2013 to 2015 range, despite the opening of recreational cannabis dispensaries across the state in 2014. Uh, the study went on to say in 2018, the same stu uh, study was conducted, also measured adolescent attitudes towards cannabis, including perceived ease of access, perceived wrongfulness of personal use, and perceived risk of harm from regular cannabis use. Uh, Brooks Russell et al. reported that neither perceived ease of access nor perceived wrongfulness of personal use changed from 2013 to 2015. Another notable study, and I'm sure I'm boring everyone to death, but I apologize, I think it's very important. Uh, this was provided by the Cato Institute, and this was uh, published in February, February 2nd, 2021. So very recent. It's addressing the effect of state marijuana legalizations. Um, Semicolon <coughs> 2021 update, written by Angela Dills, it's Gofford, Jeffrey Marin and Aaron Parton. Uh, Cato Institute is a libertarian think tank in Washington, D.C., uh, conservative leaning. Uh, basic summary of the study, which I thought was necessary to bring up. In previous work, we found that strong claims made by both advocates and critics are substantially overstated, and in some cases entirely without support from existing legalizations, mainly state legalizations have had minor effects. Um, this speaks to the rhetoric that has been surrounding this issue ever since it became, uh, you know, in, in our purview or in municipalities' purview. Um, my personal opinion, I think it's been overly politicized and uh, a lot of misinformation has been circulated on both sides. But what the study finds notable, one area where marijuana le legalization has had a significant impact is through increasing state revenue, state tax revenue. Um, this looked at Colorado, Washington, Oregon, and California, uh, who all impose significant excise taxes on recreational marijuana, along with standard state sales taxes and other taxes and licensing fees. <coughs> uh, it goes on to say that all, although revenue growth was sluggish during the first few months of sales, um, they noticed uh, right off is about $70 million in tax revenue in the first year, uh, the first year of legalization. Um, it goes on to say, since then, they have uh, pr had projected revenues in those states of up to $10 million per month, far above the initial estimate of $2 million to $3 million for the entire calendar year. Uh, conclusion here, uh, the, the data so far, however, provides little support for strong claims about legalization made by other opponents and supporters. 
The notable exception, though, is tax revenue, which has exceeded some expectations. Um, I've heard over and over that tax revenue generated from this is going to be meager and minuscule. In municipalities in upstate New York, we operate with razor thin budgets. And if there's any money that could be generated from this to help uh, with our budget process, um, even a minuscule amount goes a long way, in my opinion. Um, but that's, that's all I have to share uh, on that. So, um, it's my strong opinion. I have not heard anything compelling enough uh, to dissuade my understanding of how this will affect uh, communities. Um, I do not buy into the fear. I do not buy into that. And I think uh, there's other communities across the state that are looking at this as an economic op opportunity to embrace. <coughs> and, uh, you know, I, I would make the motion that we uh, choose to opt in and uh, participate in this program. I would second. Is there anyone else to make a motion on this? Any other? Yeas and nays. We have a, a we have a motion and a second. I mean, other discussion. You have any want to discuss it? We have. Yeah, I'm sorry. Sure. No. I'm sorry. <laughs> sure, you can. Yeah. No, whoever I, whoever I, wants to say something. The reviews. I've I've done some studies and stuff. I to see what what the reports have been on it. Uh, it. It's a whole lot safer than opioids. Uh, they are writing script for it. Uh, there is medical marijuana. Uh, so so it, it, it has been approved. And I understand the, philosoph the philosophical differences between the, the two groups. Either you're for it or against it. But uh, uh, it's, it, it's legal. You're not going to prevent it from being here. Uh, you're not going to stop it from being on the street. It, it's already there. I don't know if you've noticed it. Probably because <laughs> we, don't didn't have we don't it. have drugs in Wall. Uh, but it's out there. <laughs> so I mean, if 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 we we say okay, you could, you could sell it here. I don't think you're going to. It's extremely expensive to get into that business. It's, it's, it's hundreds of thousands of dollars just to get started. So I don't see anybody selling it on Main Street. You can grow your own. That's perfectly legal. So I, I, I don't see any point in opting out because you're not going to stop anything. It's like pretending you know the dam didn't break. Put your finger in the hole. Yeah. Okay. And to your point, Dick, uh, on the, the medical marijuana, uh, I mean, I've talked to several members in the community, constituents of all age groups that uh, do have medical marijuana cards. They're having to drive up to two hours or beyond to fill their scripts. And uh, so there are people in this community that use it medicinally. As and, well. uh, so, uh, Mr. Sehan, would you really want to make any kind of comments regarding I this? I have a, a concern about the wording of the motion based on how the state presented this to us as a municipality. Shouldn't we be saying, well, you correct me, um, we're not opting in or opting out because we're really, in essence, according to the state's proposal, we're, we're voting to take no action, which right. means they, they gave us right. a, an ultimatum right. which said, yeah, you're right. yeah, technically if you take you're no correct. Action, yes. action, then yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. you see so my you're point? You're right. Right, right. right. I, I spoke to Dave Mercer. I, I think we should make that clear to yeah. the constituency. I, I spoke know. to right. Dave Mercer about it. He, he, exactly what you said. He, he voiced, not take any action, don't, don't, because if we don't do any action when we come in, it's going to automatically we'll be in. Right. So, so in essence, we're 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 discussing right now <coughs> whether we take action or not. Right. Yeah. Right. There doesn't have to be an explicit. Right. Yeah. So okay. I can. We'll see. If we have any more act, any more yeah. talking on it first, then we'll make another change the motion. Do you have anything else you, you want to say? Yeah. You're right. Yeah. I got anything a else? Away, so. You have to say? No, not at all. Anything else? No. I, I would like. I do understand the objection the police have to it at the present right. time. 
and that is there is no chemical test you can give somebody to say they're under the influence of marijuana. I expect probably, you know, 100 years ago, there was no chemical test to see if you were under the influence of alcohol. Right, exactly. Mother is, is you know, she, she creates all the inventions. Somebody will come up with a way to test it. And since so many states and so many places are going to allow marijuana, they'll come up with a test for it. It might not be tomorrow, it might take them a while. And, and I can see their concern. I think the guy's weaving, but I can't prove what he what what he's done, what he's being influenced by. Which there are many out there. But uh, so I, I do understand their concern that they won't be able to enforce it. But uh, that'll come too. Yeah. Right. The only I, point I, that yeah. the sheriff or, and the police had that I may have disagreed with was that, in fact, they know because in their own internal organizations there is a true and tried test, and it's the use of hair. The right. result may not be instantaneous, but the test is without fail. Oh, it'll show yeah. that you have oh, yeah. in your system. Yeah. It won't show your it, under It'll say your hair particles for six months. months. I mean, it's legal to have yeah. marijuana in the industry. Yeah. Which kind so of makes the so, so instant think. testing so moot, yeah. right? So, no. so anybody else want to say anything? Thank you for... I, uh, if I could... I, I have my five minutes. Yeah. Being... You have five minutes? Well, a couple minutes. Being a narcotics detective in NYPD and doing it for, for many, many years, I've that was the one conversation we had years ago. I remember saying one day this is going to be marijuana is going to be legal. We always thought that. But I've spoke to a number of people in our community. Many of them are on medical marijuana for pains, for things like that. And some of the people that were against it, I was trying to explain to them, listen, if we had a chance, if somebody in your family had a chance to go to a store and buy the medical marijuana, or buy just say buy the, re, the, the smoke when you want to smoke, and, you, and it's under heavy regulations, wouldn't you feel better than someone buying it off the street with a chance of being laced with fentanyl or cocaine? Especially fentanyl. If you res listen to the news, there's tons of fentanyl coming into this country. There's enough fentanyl in this country to kill every American six times. So that's kind of scary, because the only good of fentanyl is, is for death. There's no other good use for it. So that would be one of my reasons for that. On the other end of the coin, there are a lot of people that use it for pains, knees, back, joints, things like that. A lot of people in our community drive, as Eric has said, two, three, two hours to get it. When you're looking at that, would you rather have your mother, your father, your brother, your sister, everybody, some of your athletes go and get this cream and put it on their bones, or would you send them to a doctor who will easily give them oxy, Oxycontin and anything they want, and that's where a lot of our people are being stuck on the pills, and then they end up going to the Suboxone Clinic over at DVH. And, and when you put it like that, it makes a little bit of sense, too. So. Um, and, and as Dick said, to buy one, just so you know, to open one of these stores, which I don't know if it ever happened here, you're talking about a million dollar operation. It costs $20,000 just to get an application, a non-refundable application for the permit. The permit is $200,000 a year. That's a lot of money. Your average Joe is not going to go and, and open up a store. And it, the people that have been to the places, my sister lives in California, so she told me about it. There's security, there's plexiglass, you've got to show your identification at least twice. Mm -hmm. They put it into the computer, they, they have you in the system. So it's not haphazardly done, too. So, yes? Why don't they just go through, for medical marijuana at any rate, why don't they just go through I the I don't prescription? I don't know why they I, I, I don't know. Because the state doesn't yeah. want to be culpable no, for, yeah. for yeah. regulating it yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> through pharmacies. Yeah. Yeah. You still have to buy it at a, a dispensary. Yeah. And, and as far as the revenue for the, for, the, for the municipalities, there's a 4% sales tax. We would get 75% of that, of that 4% that would come to our community. And the other 25% would go to the county because the county can't opt out. They have no options as far as that goes. Just so people get an idea. And, and how much could it be? You know, just to give you an idea, fifteen thousand dollars a year would be one percent of our budget. So it, it's not a lot of money. You would get a lot more than that, but it's something. So anyway, that's my three cents. 
You want to change your motion? Uh, we could Do we need one? Do we need no, a motion? We, we, don't, we, need we don't need a motion, right? Just don't take any action? No action. So I would draw okay. my motion. So we're not going to take any action? No, you, I think it's just a matter we discussed it and decided not to act on it. We're not gonna, we're not going to opt out. Let's put it that way. We're not taking an action to opt out. Which the state says that if we're not opting out, then we're automatically we don't have in. to uh, right, yeah. make any motion or take any action or impose. Yeah, and any I, issue. I spoke to our lawyer and he said that too. He said if you don't don't opt out, they'll just leave it. You automatically be in. For the record, though, I mean, should we do a motion of no action? I have no problem leading that. <coughs> Well, because uh, people are going to ask us what yeah. we what we decided. Today we decided to, to take no action. Right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll, I'd like it in a form of. A, okay. I lead it, the motion. No action. I second that motion. All in favor. Aye. 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 Opposed. Carried. Okay. Uh, oh, my turn. <laughs> Mayor's report. I'm sorry. A uh, couple things I wanted to bring up. Um, Number one, we have a USDA loan out there for about, how much is that loan, two million? Started off at three something, and it's just an under three now. Just under three million dollars. I was speaking to uh, John Shahadi uh, from Fiscal Advisors. I think you guys have got emails from him. Yes. He, um, we are now paying a 3.25% interest rate. They have a new rate now of 2.49 percent. If we if we took that, our, our our current payment is not expired until 2049. If we if we did it, we would save 326 thousand dollars over the period of our of our loan, which would be roughly 10 thousand dollars a year. That's take it's really three eighty, but it's sixty thousand in fees and all that. Because the current terms have now expired and we have to make a decision on that loan. No. no. USA no. gave us the USDA gave us the option to go ahead and refinance. At a lower rate. At a lower rate. At a lower rate. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. But it wouldn't be through USDA, it would be through like stock exchange, I believe. Yeah, I spoke to our bond counsel, Joan, Joan Blycom, mm -hmm. and she said, Ed, I was going to give you guys a call. This was a great thing. You should do it. No one's offering that on a, no. a loan no. that size. No. Anywhere. So it's just something that we, they're going to, I don't know, do we, will we have to make a motion on that or just, yeah. 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 I, would, I, would say, I would like to have a motion that we proceed with that because it's a nice savings. What does our fiscal affairs expert say? There's no, there's nothing up front. There's no penalties. No, there's no money up front for us or anything. It's all going to be on savings. I'll, I'll make a motion to refinance the, the USDA loan. Yep. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? I Carried. I thought my chair when I read that email. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. At what percentage? Two point. It, it's at three point two five now. We're going to go down to two point four nine. We we would save in our advantage roughly three hundred and twenty six thousand dollars over over until. 2049, so it's, and it'd be roughly ten thousand dollars a year. <coughs> Talking about a no-brainer. So that's a that's a good one. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about, craft. We have been getting there been a lot of spillages. We've been having some overage costs, and in the past we've just absorbed everything, and it's just been that. When the spill came, the guy who was there forgot to put the plug in and, you know, whatever. It's, it's human error, and we're getting hit with all these exorbitant costs. Just to give you an idea, we had roughly these last few times, we got hit, we got about $23,456 extra charges that we had to pay. So I would like to Jody have Jody draft up a letter and mail it to Kraft and tell them about it and see where we go with that and see what they say. But I, I want to run it by the board first before we do something like that. I don't think it hurt anything to ask no, them. No, can't hurt it. I mean, we can't, I'm not going to demand it, but I'm going to tell them, you know, what it is and why and how come and, and see where we go with that. Right. Nothing yeah. wrong with starting a 